could swap them out. No, been there, done that. Down there, lost me eyebrows. Think, Coco, think! We'd be well on our way to paradise. Visionaries patting themselves on the backs for their grand accomplishments if you'd only think! Yes, that does sound rather lovely. Ah! I mean, Master Force, you know, what a pleasant surprise. <gasps> We're not blasting off already, are we? The schedule remains unchanged, for better or worse. Which is why the Forum has elected to accept assistance in resolving the ether burner conundrum. Huh. Not seen you lot down here before. There are Archons among their number, but engineering is not their expertise. Nevertheless, the Forum concedes the slim possibility that they may have insights to offer. If not, you are at liberty to return them to the surface, by whatever means you see fit. I assure you that won't be necessary. Now, about your troubles with the Etherburner. Aye, aye, I'll walk you through it. Suppose I could do with a change of pace. As the name ought to tell you, the ether burner burns ether, ambient or otherwise, and transforms it into motive force. Think of it like a giant bomb that never stops exploding. Even out in that black void where the ether's right sparse, it's strong enough to move our arc. <laughs> and it probably won't kill you like an actual bomb. <sighs> but it ain't perfect. According to my calculations, to travel to the moon and back fast enough for the forum's liking, the conversion rate needs to be 6% more efficient. A measly 6%, you say? But if I could have squeezed even another 0.6 out of it, don't you think I'd have built it that way in the first place? Hast thou consulted with the Lopperids? Yes, they too are conducting their own research, for lack of a ready answer. The Moon's propulsion systems are considerable, naturally, yet they are commensurately massive. It is no easy feat to convert their technology into an efficient means of propulsion for a teeny tiny toy boat, as they say, and as I most certainly do not. Yes, exactly! Damn it all, I asked for a fine adamantite and they send me uppity rabbits with inscrutable, ancient, incompatible technology! You're trying to drive me mad! Do you speak of elegant refined adamantite, perchance? You know of it. Only in the most general terms, I'm afraid. T'was an alloy of elegant mate but the secrets of its production were closely guarded. As I recall, the record stated it was vital to Dalamud's construction and launch. Oi, that's the stuff. No material more conductive far as I know. Slotting some in, it's like blowing up a dam and watching the river of Aoife come rushing through. I ain't a living soul that knows how to make it though. We were fortunate enough to salvage some for the ether burner, just a wee bit, mind, from a chunk of Dalamud that came hurtling into the northern empty during the calamity. With more? Well, that extra 6% efficiency will be child's play. It's a crying shame that we've no other sources. Surely the many shards of Dalamud scattered throughout Eorzea would suffice. Why not get the refined adamantite from them? Oh, <laughs> we tried, believe you me. But only a few specialised pieces would have had any in them to begin with. Drive calls from Ragnarok class internment hulks. Those are the prize bits we really need. According to the gleaners, getting to them means delving deep into the shards. And the defences are still very operational and very eager to blow them up. It's rough going in there. 
even for the cream. Not sure they'd make it out alive. Weren't we near that part of the Ragnarok when we went to destroy Bahamut? That may be for the best, though you doubtless find the task too dull for your liking. Hmm. There are multiple internment hulks in Eorzea alone, so handling this ourselves may not be the most sufficient option. Rather, if we could salvage Adamantite from the shards simultaneously... Thancred, is the link shell we established before you went to Garlemald still active? Of course. The floor is yours. What's all this? Gathering firewood, so to speak. We alone can accomplish little, but joined by others, we may yet build a bonfire to carry us heaven's wood. This is Alphano. The Scions have need of you. Understood. I will contact the Lord Commander and dispatch our finest at once. My sisters are somewhat preoccupied with the final days, so I will lead the Twelveswood expedition myself. Are you aware of any other sources of refined adamantite? Logically, such an invaluable alloy would have been utilized solely where absolutely necessary, in components intended to conduct or collect surpassing amounts of ether. Any extant instrumentation or devices would have likely found their way into the hands of etherologists or enthusiasts. Magical artifacts of Allegan design? The Eastern Alliance will send word to one and all. Are there other ways we may offer aid? No shards of the Lesser Moon scar our soil, but our stake in this cause is no less for it. Is there anything in Othered that might be of use to you? Othered, you say? Oh, you got friends in far places, lad. Anyway, if you're offering, I wouldn't say no to one of those Far Eastern sacred relics. Some of them can hold enough ether to summon a whole damn primal. Why a source like that with the ether burner? And three, two, one, kaboom! I gather you heard his explosive enthusiasm. Might you secure us a suitable relic? It shall be done. I know little of machines, but I promise we will do our utmost to gather the materials you need to finish your starship. I am glad for the work, in truth. Better to busy oneself than wait and fret over disasters foretold. Then why are we all still standing about yapping? This plunder for the taking. And I'm a born plunderer. I'll be an old Charlian before you know it. Start mixing the grog. I'm certain that can be arranged. Thank you all, and do be careful. Just like that. Aye, just like that. Our refined adamantite is on its way. Now let us consider our next steps, shall we? There's yet much to be done.
course of action is clear. We must harvest refined adamantite from the shards of Dalamud and procure arcane relics of Allegan Make. Summon the best and brightest of our immortal flames and form an expeditionary party at once. Call upon the Sultan Sworn and brass blades for support as you must. Papashan, send word to the guilds. We will require the expertise of master artisans if we are to have any hope of identifying and recovering these elusive materials. Fear guys, we have need of your stone torches. They are to assist the immortal flames in scouring the ruins and to help secure the surrounding areas. I trust I can count on your support. As commander of the Stone Torches, my son Zimberk will personally see it done. Pippin, I would have you lead the raiding party. Assemble your finest and with Chizona's blade clear the way. Lord Lollorito, I pray you take charge of the search for Alagon relics. Surely you know of some being traded on open or clandestine markets, or sleeping in collector's vaults. Of course, I ask not that you do this out of the kindness of your heart. By all means, profit on the transactions. I wish you the joy of it. The final days descend upon our world. If circumstances are truly as dire as they say, Uldar's best efforts may be for naught. And yet, when we Aeorzeans rose from the ashes to rebuild our broken realm, did we not learn one simple truth? That which seems all but impossible to overcome alone may yet be possible if we stand together. It was the Scions who united us then, and it is the Scions who call upon us now. Uldar will answer that call. We will summon our courage and join the fight for our world's future. You know your duties. I, Nanamo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of all, bid you good luck and good speed. We fielded a goodly number, but our ranks are heavy with healers, and an abundance of restorative magics will be of little help in destroying Dalamud's defences. Still, it has ever been thus with Gridania. We must steel ourselves for a protracted engagement. In that case, might I suggest taking us along? Commander Hext, what are you doing here? None of the shards in Girabania are big enough to hold an internment hulk. So we said to ourselves, why not lend our neighbors a hand? We thought you might be short on people with a talent for breaking things. While it pains me to admit it, you are right. Our artificiency is so plain to see. It might have been a lifetime ago that I was once one of the Scions assigned to the Shroud. I know this forest well. I know your people. And I know we will be stronger if we fight this fight together.
Then I will impose upon you with a clear conscience. Come, let us speak of how to integrate our forces. I won't let it all be for nothing. I promise you, Papaluma. Everyone has already... Ah. And so, in summation, the Eastern Alliance, as well as the Honorable Lord Lollarito himself, reached out to me for assistance in procuring these treasures of the Divine, and I, in turn, do beseech the Confederacy for aid. Hmm? Is that... Hancock? What a surprise this is. And a fortuitous one at that. I have a favor to ask, you see. Isn't it? The town is a buzz. Everyone eager to meet with our friends from the moon. It would behoove you to consult with Sleeping Way. As our moon's pilot, his advice should be most pertinent. I'm impressed. Truth be told, I struggle to tell one from another. No offense intended, of course. Your friends left Mare Lementorum. We spent no small amount of time with your Uriange. Oh, the conversations we had. He told us all about Etheris, answered our every question, no matter how trifling or trivial. Look! Every page filled to the margins with knowledge. When I first arrived, I was struck by how little I knew. It was daunting. But then, I realized that, were it not for Uriange and his teachings, we'd still be stuck on the moon, gazing at your world and wondering what we've been missing. <laughs> what would they think if they could see Uriange now? I dare say they'd be more than a bit surprised. 
and impressed, no doubt. Master Louis Soir, Minfilia, Papalimo, and not to forget. Oh there. Heard there was a visiting expert who we might bother with a few questions. I take it you'd be the one. Yeah, yes, I am. Wilson and Blavida, Charlian's foremost researchers in the field of teleportation magic, and Moonbreeder's parents. It, it, it hath been some time. Tis, tis good to see you in. Uh, good health. Likewise, old friend. Lavida and I were most honored to answer the call. Never expected this reunion, though, did we, dear? Arfe, the nerve. Sending that letter, then running off to the gods know where. Have any idea how worried we were? I. I'm sorry. It was remiss of me not to deliver the news in person. No, more than that. It was I who. Our daughter was disillusioned after Master Louisois left her behind. The day the Scions called upon her was the happiest I'd seen her in years. She made her every choice of her own free will. No one could have ever forced her to do otherwise. Don't blame yourself for her death. Celebrate her life. You know that's what she want. If there is one thing we resent you for, it was that we could not be there to mourn her with you. Reading the words you penned in that shaky hand, we must have cried as much for you as we did for her. I'm sorry. I truly, truly am. I knew not what to say, knew not how to express my feelings. The poems and platitudes of wiser men, musings on sadness and loss, studied and memorized, and meaningless in the moment. Silly boy, we are all powerless before such grief. Even now, try as I might, the words escape me. But in our hearts, we know, we always know. I remember when you were young. How the lads teased you for choosing the company of books over others. Our moon didn't take kindly to that. Be nice to Orionje, she'd shout, and give them a walloping. No matter how many times we scolded her. So we offered a suggestion. Rather than starting fights, why don't you be the bridge between Orionje and the others? She had to mull it over for a while. Arms crossed, brow furrowed in intense thought. But from that day on, she never let you be alone. She'd drag you outside to play, pepper you with endless questions, read the same books you read, all to try and understand you that much better. 
I'm sure it was annoying and exhausting at the time. But she only ever had the best of intentions. And look at you now, at the center of the crowd. The reason there even is a crowd, having brought these people together. You've no idea how proud we are. To see the boy, our daughter trusted and believed in more than anyone, grow into the man she always knew he could be. I can see her in you too, feel her. She walks with you wheresoever you go. So thank you, Orianger, for being who you are. I... I think... I can feel her too. The truth of her life. Not sorrow, but hope and love. You could ask the man himself. Oh, no, no. But watching this exchange reminds me how much I've yet to learn about your world. And its people. You can live here your entire life and hardly learn a thing. And that's why it's too soon for this to end. All set, I take it. We finished what we could. Delivered supplies, tracked down escaped animals. Trivial tasks as they may be. That's enough, don't you think? If there was anything more important still undone, that would be a problem in itself. The vessel is essentially ready for departure. All that remains is to load the final batch of supplies and see everyone on board. Once we've readied the ether burner, that is. Ah, had a feeling we might find you all here. Our consultations with the Loperets, too, have run their course. Pleased I am to say that our researchers' concerns have for the most part been allayed though some insist on making adjustments to the very end. For their part, Living Way and her peers have graciously offered to stay and keep the people company, lest any lingering queries go unanswered. All that remains is to wait for the refined adamantite. Alphano, are you there? It's me, Cryo. Your special delivery has arrived. Round up everyone and come to the harbour at once. Speak of the devil. Let us go at once. Forgive the intrusion, Master Fortuna. I bring urgent news. A great commotion has broken out in Scholar's Harbor. Your presence is requested with all speed. Now, 
Where might this delivery be? Oh. I'm sure it's very important, but we cannot accept these without the proper permits. Why the twelve? Surely, these can't all be... Bleeding hellfire! They're bringing them by sea and by air! All these folks in these crates. And more on the way. Got your adamantite right here. A bigger haul than any of these sorry bastards brought, and that's no lie. Yes, because you were charged with seeing the shipments from Gridania and Uldar here, along with your own. Give credit where credit is due. Sounds like the sorry whinging of a sore loser. An hypocrite to boot. Ain't no way a scrawny whelp like you took a dozen steps inside a Dalaman shard. I'll have you know I went all the way to the entrance. I played a vital role in keeping a lookout whilst our expeditionary forces secured the adamantite. Left you outside so you wouldn't get anyone killed, did they? Well then, credit where credit's due, you did a right fine job sitting on your ass. Take that back. Make me. I will not stick to your level. My, what a grand welcome party. Hancock and Saraban. We come bearing relics both sacred and elegant, as well as a few other gifts that may be of help, to be presented with best wishes from the Eastern Alliance. I myself have come with a sacred relic of the Koji. Upon learning of your need, Bunchen bade me deliver it on behalf of the Blue with all haste. Fearing I could not swim here with the necessary speed, however, I thought to beg our Confederate allies for aid. To my delight, Hancock was already preparing for departure at the selfsame port, and had space for additional cargo. We did, of course, need quite the impressive vessel to get it all here in time. It's all wonderful to hear, but what of the extraordinary cost? I shudder to think of the ransom we must pay for such a bounty. <laughs> Fret not for your coin purse, young Alphano. Lord Lollarito looks ever towards the profits of the future, and thus the East Aldenar Trading Company went to some lengths to reduce the financial liability. And since the Scions funded the entire venture, not a gill need be rendered up in compensation. Everything is already yours. We funded the venture. When? <laughs> Don't let the name fool you. This coin keeper knows a thing or two about spending. When it comes to capital investiture, a sprinkling of gill here and there will not do. You need enough savings to make waves when it really counts, which is why frugality is paramount. We also have the benefit of a generous patron. Generous being rather an understatement. She has supported us from the shadows since the very founding of the Scions. Air. We even had coffers to fill. Mother! A 
millions. I remain, of course, an entirely neutral party. I simply thought our family's coffers were needlessly full. We can hardly take them with us on your teeny tiny toy boat now, can we? And would be a shame to leave all that hard-earned wealth unspent. Waste, Waste not. not. However did you manage so much in so short a time? Though? We expected word to reach only a fraction of our allies. Did I not tell you I have my ways? Erendil, you were involved too. I received a letter from Cryon after we parted ways in Labyrinthus. She explained what the science were trying to accomplish why you might soon require the services of the cleaners, spread across the world as we are. I pray you do not interpret this as a betrayal of Charlotte. I accept that the form's aim in pushing us to our limits was to preserve what knowledge we have, and I bear you no ill will for it. Yet, in collecting that knowledge, what I claim to appreciate most about our star that there remains so much we do not know. That is why I chose to help the science, to combat the obliteration of those countless, undiscovered wonders. I held no illusions that they would be less demanding taskmasters. Though, rest assured, if I had, I would have been sorely disappointed. To make a long story short, the whole of the guildship cooperated to ensure your call was heard far and wide. What's this about a ship that can fly to the moon? And why didn't you mention it sooner? The one time you don't beg my aid, your problem's a bloody ship that can fly to the moon. See it! You brought the tea! Of course! Garland Ironworks finest. You need only point us towards my new favorite ship. As you like us not suspect, we've also brought Adamantite for Mordona's Dalamud Shard. I admit to some consternation upon first receiving Kral's message. So few Scions remain at the Rising Stones now. Far too few for such an expedition. However, the Gleaners were able to secure us reinforcements. Nidalshire's treasure hunters, not least among them. Fascinating as all this is, I fail to see how it explains your presence here. Does Razat Han not have more pressing concerns? We do, yet averting the final days would be the most expedient solution. That, and I am indebted to you. Though they chose to take their leave of Thavnair, those you saved in Galimund remain my people. My gratitude is beyond words. It is appropriate that I aid you in kind. If in the doing we bring salvation to others of this star, so much the better. You will recall that I spoke of my father, Midgard Sumer, and his journey across the great expanse. As he traveled betwixt the stars, his resplendent scales drank of the ether in those nigh empty surrounds and imparted to him the strength to persevere. Thinking they might further your cause, I called out to 
to my kin for consent. Ajdaya's answer was silence, as ever. Tiamat and Chris Velgre, however, responded favorably to the suggestion. My sire, too, gave his assent. Thus have I brought you his own worm scales. Fit them to your purpose, and seek a worthier fate for us all. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone else so familiar with the unique properties of dragon scales. So I invited myself here. Look at me, this is so unbelievable. I've gone right back round to believe it again. Forget a 6% gain of efficiency. With all these goodies, we could get 7, no, 10, no, 14 bleeding percent. <gasps> Think of how far we could go. What we could do with that much power. What we could blow up. If Kokol is duly convinced, then it must be true. In which case, the science end of the bargain has been fulfilled. Would you not agree? Yes, Father? I know not what you seek of Hydaelyn, nor for what purpose you would take command of our ship. Yet this much is certain. To do so will be to dictate the fate of this star and the lives upon it. The lives of each and every creature, in their magnitude and their fragility. Do you understand? And are you prepared? We have seen and we have felt how much each life shapes this world. And so we are determined to abandon none. We understand what is at stake. And we are prepared to bear this burden. Then I... I will bear it with you. I beg you, share your struggles with me. As family. You grasped my fingers with such tiny hands the day you were born. I thought my heart might burst. It was love and happiness beyond expression. Overwhelming, and a conviction so powerful that I trembled with something close to rage. I had heard the final days foretold. I swore to myself then and there that I would not let them steal your futures. The great exodus would succeed, must succeed. No sacrifice or sin was worse than the alternative. If anything gave me pause, it was mine own father. The Archon Louis Soir openly decried Charlien's policies, a perspective which I regarded with increasing disdain as I grew older. Yet even as part of me thought him a fool, perhaps I also hoped that he, of all people, would devise a brilliant means to save my children. A naive hope, but stubborn enough that I could never bring myself to keep you apart.
No, that was his doing when he perished at Cartano. As we pulled that twisted slab of Dalamud from the sea, I remembered the warmth of your newborn touch. Chastened, I vowed never again to suffer any interference in my mission to protect you. No matter that you yourselves wished otherwise. Detest me, fight me tooth and nail, I would suffer it, and more, and be satisfied so long as I could force you onto the ship. <laughs> I was wrong. You two have grown so much stronger and so much wiser than I dared dream. You have earned the right to walk your own path and already begun to do so. Good. Because there are things we care about and people we love and none of them is replaceable. Not a one. It cannot have been an easy journey for you to have come so far. We shall be glad to acquaint you with the finer details someday, once this danger has passed. All that we have seen and heard, that we have felt and learned in our travels. Ours is not a kind world, but it is beautiful. Always. Oh no. Are you quite sure that's wise? After all, someone turns pale and flees the room when he sees so much as an envelope containing word of your adventures. Whatever will happen if he learns what you were really up to. Amelians. wronged my children most gravely, I owe you an apology as well. I assumed that it was the Scion's influence that made them so keen to charge headlong into danger. Yours, in particular. I see now that said influence instead brought them together with the many fine people gathered here today. In which case, I hope you continue to guide them. If we finish loitering about the harbour, might I suggest we put our plans into motion? People are beginning to look confused. Perhaps you can spare a few words ere they resume the tedious lugging of cargo. You have no small number of friends and admirers here, after all. Your assistance is appreciated. Now, in an orderly fashion, if you please. 